G'day. Yeah, I moved to the shed for the beer review, the wife's home. But this is the Czech Pale Premium Lager, actually. I think I even called it Czech Pale Lager, but uh, they're actually called Czech Pale Premium Lagers, I think. And as you can see, it looks quite nice. It's not 100% clear. It's not filtered clear. And it's probably only been in the keg a couple of weeks. Um, I'm not sure when it was now. Maybe two or three weeks it's been in the keg. But it is quite nice. And as you can see, we'll start at the top. The head is holding up mighty fine. It is white, fluffy. Um, I didn't use any carapils or anything like that. It was a very, very simple grain bill. Um, going off memory now, I think it was like four and a half, uh, four kilo of Gladfield Pilsner malt and a little bit of Munich. And that was it. You can see I'm not having to stir that head up or anything. It's just there nicely. It's a bit harsh on the pour on that tap. Uh, if you watch my videos, every beer I pour out of that right tap, you'll see we'll do that for some reason. I haven't quite knuckled it down. It's loose too. It's one of those taps. I keep tightening it up and it gets loose. Like it doesn't leak loose. It's just sort of loose at the back. It, um, it always pours faster than the other taps. It could be anything. It could be the, the manifold. Anyway, I'm getting... To, anyway, I know what it could be. I just haven't bothered fixing it. I just sort of know on that side of the tap, on that tap, that uh, it pours a little bit more aggressively than the other two. But, you know, look at that. Now, compared to the other one, um, this was exact same recipe besides the hops um, as the first test brew I kept calling. It wasn't a test brew. It was a um, brew to... Um, propagate a bit more yeast to get this one going and I used Halito in that traditional I think it was Halito tradition and in this one I used uh, Czech Saz 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 um, and according to my wife she didn't didn't like the Halito one at all Halito one at all but she liked this one and she's been angry at me because I've been saying, I haven't done the video yet. Stop drinking it. And I've been not drinking it too. Today I, I kegged the, uh, the one that's more closer towards uh, the Pilsner uh, uh, Urquell. That's another story. Anyway, this is quite nice. Um, it was the 3470 yeast. It's not throwing any sulfur or anything like that. There is a yeast smell. Classic, but it's, it's a clean, a clean lager yeast smell, if that makes sense. It's what you'd sort of expect. There goes another plane. Planes have been going over all day. It's, uh, yeah, it's just good. They're very simple to brew. The, where you have people have problems with lagers is the ferment and uh, the transfer usually, or bottling's still not real good for it. Um, unless you can purge your bottles. But you've just got to be careful. And with all these really cheap pressure fermenters around these days, you know, to brew a, a nice one like this is really easy. I am planning on maybe doing a decoction. I think I've mentioned before. I just haven't had the time. Decoction takes a long time to brew. And brew day extends your brew day a fair bit. I haven't got round to it yet. But we'll talk about the water. I think my RO water has made a huge difference to my lagers, to what I usually make. Um, it, just, it just has that right mouthfeel. Um, a lot of the times when I brew lagers, even though I, I, I follow it and um, I might buy special yeast and um, import the malt and, you know, all that sort of thing, 
and do it traditionally, this it still sort of ends up being a bit more like an ale. Whereas I think if you the RO water has made that little bit of difference to make this much more like a classic European uh, Pilsner, which is a good thing. And today was the first time I, um, I've tried it with a pale ale. I haven't tasted it yet. I only brewed it today. But this one here. That's with Azaka, Citra and Eldorado. A combo I haven't done before. Thought I'd mix it up a little bit. <laughs> People are, so you're always brewing the same beer as well. That's because they're good. And you've got to keep brewing the same beers to learn and you just adjust things and adjust things but anyway back on to this um yeah that's good if anything it could maybe be a slight more bitter i think people forget how bitter lagers really are um i think these are up around i think this might be about 35 to 40 somewhere in the middle there and really that's where they need to be And I think I'm, I don't know whether it might have been that the hops were a little bit old. So yeah, hops are very low alpha at the, at the moment. They have been for several years, the, most of the traditional um, European lager type hops. I remember when I first started brewing, they were up around sort of what you read in books, four or five or whatever, but I don't look for, for, I don't look for them often, but lately when I've looked for them, They've all been like two. I've even bought ones that are just about one, just over one percent alpha. So I think that makes a difference to the bitterness. Well, of course it does quantity wise, but even if you try and make up for it, you're not really sure. Especially when they're that low in alpha acid. Um, all hops lose alpha acids, you know, over time. And when you haven't got much to start with, you know, doesn't take much to drop it down. But as you can see, I've got to stop shaking it around. I've knocked all the lacing off. It's got lacing. It's still got a head. It's good. I think they do get better with lagering. They get more classic taste. You can drink them fresh. This, my two fermented in under two weeks. Um, I know people rush this and I, I don't call it rushing. Oh, it's a way I've sort of always done lagers. Um, and before Bruce Sloppy copied the other fellow that did it, the other original fellow, I read his his um, version of fast lager years ago. But um, I don't do that. What I do is my usual thing, and I've talked about it on my cast many times, and people are probably getting sick of me talking about it. But it doesn't matter if it's lager or an ale yeast, but we'll concentrate on lager now but it's the same story for ale i watch the ferment um, and as soon as i see the krausen start to drop that's my for me that's my point that i know that i raise the temperature whether it be at one degree two degrees um, and that's what happened with this it was about day five or six um, which is you know pretty close to my ale yeast um, I saw the Krausen starting to drop. I had it at 13, which is okay for um, 3470. Or was it 12? It was 12 or 13. Got to about day five, and I saw the Krausen start to drop. So I raised it a couple of degrees. Um, it was like to 14 or something the, the next day, and then 16, and then 18. Um, and then I think it went to 19, and I left it at 19 for three days, and it was done. I then cold crashed for about three days. Um, very, very cold, about one degree. And then I kegged it and it's just been sitting in the keg ever since. The only thing I missed out there was the pitch. Uh, I always pitch a little bit warm uh, for lagers especially, but even for ales. Just a couple of degrees higher than what you're going to ferment at. Um, and then only for a few hours six hours whatever as soon as you start seeing something happen 
Like if you have to go to bed and leave it overnight, turn it down to your ferment temp. But as soon as you start seeing something happen, that's when I bump it down to your uh, usual ferment temp. The reason I bring that up today is because I always say it and people have a go at me about it and say it's wrong. You should pitch it ferment temp or lower it and bring it up because I read it somewhere. But uh, I noticed it again. I know USO5 tell you to do it. Um, I used a, a quark yeast today, but this instructions aren't about um, quark yeasts because they're a very, um, they don't even mention quark on the back. But again, I haven't got my glasses. It says, sorry, I got all tongue tied then. What it says is, store it in the fridge, four degrees or 40 F. Warm slowly to 70 F or 21 degrees, which just means you take it out of the fridge and put it on your shelf, you know. Cut package, uh, add to cooled aerated wort, wash or whatever else you're sticking it in. Uh, lower to optimum ferment fermentation temperature once fermentation begins. Usually within 5 to 15 hours. That's what I do. That's what I've always done. Um, and so, that, yeah, it's there, plain as day, on the packet, white labs. You pitch a little warm. It just gets the yeast going. And then as soon as you see some action, or you need to go to bed, <laughs> turn it up, or turn it down, sorry, to your pitching temp, to your fermentation temp. And that's how you'll get a nice start, a nice kickoff. And you won't be waiting around for three weeks for your lager to ferment. Once you see the crowds and start to drop, if you can, some vessels you can't. If you're measuring, 1020 uh, to me is a good spot. Once it hits under that, I um, can't remember what that is in um, bricks, but anyway, 1020 is where I, once I take a reading that's there or under is when I start ramping the temperatures up. I poured two others. <laughs> <clears throat> had to clear those lines out there we go oh, I think that's about all I can say about this beer it's just a nice clean it has that lager taste though there's nothing worse than something being way too clean a lager because all it tastes like is sort of fizzy water I'm not talking about rice lagers <laughs> I might brew one of them next but um, you need some of that yeast character there you don't want it sulfury. I mean, some styles have a touch of sulfur. But this has definitely got the, um, the dry and, um, for want of a better term, that you can taste some of the salts, you know, even though there's, there's nothing in it. I think I've said it before, and I don't know if I uploaded the review. There's a review about the first batch I used to propagate the yeast for this. Um, and I mentioned it there too. It's a bizarre thing. It's like the opposite. You cut the salts out, but because it's so dry and there's a little little bit there, it's not chalky, but yeah, it's, it's like there's a slight chalky thing. Anyway, I'm talking too much. What I do want to show you before I go, wow, this is way too long. Is that going to fall off there and smash? Good. I, the postman bought some of my shirts today. Besides the one I've got on and my Hopheads one I've showed you, plus all the other homebrew networks and cellar dweller shirts. There is one of my other designs, homebrew, because it is the only, to me, true independent craft beer. It doesn't matter how small your brewery is, once you go commercial, hmm. <laughs> uh, there's this one. There's two different ones of this. Um, they're all on different colours. You don't have to get them on the colours I wear. Uh, there's one without the hops and malt coloured in, so it's just black as well. I wanted to do it dark because most of my shirts are all black on uh, white on black. I just wanted to make it a bit darker. Um, anyway, that's that one. And oh, it fell on the floor. You'll see me flog these a few times over the next few weeks and months. It is Christmas, and I've got to try and keep this channel going somehow. Uh, Homebrew Network over your uh, heart. <laughs> and on the back, it has that thing again. 
Home Brew True Independent Craft Beer. I have, have I've got other ones where um, don't make a mistake if you're ordering that. That's on the front. And there's no homebrew network anywhere. Some people don't like the, the homebrew network thing, so. Yeah. Anyway, there's, there's another three, plus the Hopeds one, plus this one. They're all there. And there is a brand new one I designed, which I really like. Um, but I only designed it three or four, two days ago. And I uploaded it yesterday. And so, of course, I haven't got one to, to wear myself or to show you. But uh, that would be awesome. It all supports the channel, whichever way you do. Thank you, my Patreons. Like, share, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Take it easy. Thank you for my Patreons. I'll see you in the next one. Look, that little haze I had in this beer must be chill haze. Because this little one I had off to the side, the same exact same beer, is a crystal clear. Cheers.